Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to this asteroid you see right here. The asteroid known as 469219 Kamo Oelewa, or I guess close enough. It's also known as 2016 HO3. And we've talked about this asteroid back in 2016 when it was originally discovered. And this is a pretty interesting rock. Pretty interesting asteroid. Mostly because of its orbit around the solar system and its orbit to some extent around planet Earth. Because of this, this particular asteroid is technically known as the quasi-satellite of planet Earth. So sort of like a moon, but not really a moon. It doesn't really orbit the Earth, but it does sort of appear as if it did. And this is actually the smallest, the closest, and also the most stable of such unusual objects. It's the most stable quasi-satellite we have. But it's also an asteroid, roughly around 40 meters across or about 135 feet. And it's in a class of asteroids known as Apollo asteroids. These are the ones that usually come relatively close to planet Earth and occasionally even collide with planet Earth. But what's really unusual about this rock is the recent paper that might have discovered its origin. It might have come from the moon. As in, it's actually a piece of the moon. And this is where things get a little bit more exciting. So first of all, because of its unusual orbit, it's somewhat difficult to investigate this object. It's really only visible for a few weeks in April and becomes extremely difficult to study after that. And so even though it very likely stayed in this orbit for hundreds and hundreds of years, it's only been discovered a few years ago. And even today, it's a little bit difficult to study this particular rock. But it's also not particularly close to planet Earth. At the closest, it comes to within approximately 5 million kilometers, specifically 0.03 astronomical units, or roughly around 13 times the distance of Earth to the Moon. And so actually detecting such a small rock from such a faraway distance is already a pretty big achievement. But even though it's too distant to be a true satellite, basically it's not captured by the Earth's gravity, its orbit around planet Earth is nevertheless really intriguing. Here's what it looks like, or will look like, for roughly around a thousand years. And this is obviously not the only quasi-satellite we've discovered. This one here was also discovered back in 2003, but since then it seems to have moved to a completely different orbit and is no longer considered to be a quasi-satellite. Which is actually what we expect from most of these rocks. But for some reason, this one here, 2016 HO3, with a somewhat difficult Hawaiian name, mysteriously seems to be extremely stable compared to some of the other rocks. The scientists have calculated that it stayed in this orbit for several hundred years already and will most likely stay with planet Earth for at least 300 years more. And because of this, a lot of scientists were really wondering where exactly did it come from. One of the potential explanations here was actually in regards to its orbital plane. So here, if we were to look at this from the side, we would see that its orbital plane is somewhat similar to the orbital plane of planet Earth. It's a little bit off, but not by much. And for asteroids, especially the ones that usually come from the asteroid belt, this is a little bit unusual. They normally would have a much more high inclination in terms of the orbital plane. And so one of the potential explanations of its origin came from the idea of asteroids captured in the Lagrange point of various planets. In this case, we expect Earth to also have some of the asteroids captured in its relatively stable Lagrange point 4 and Lagrange point 5. Here, the asteroids would be orbiting with planet Earth and would most likely stay there for a very, very long time. But some of them can get dislodged just enough to then be also captured by planet Earth or to at least come closer to planet Earth. And so some scientists thought that maybe this is exactly what happened here. Maybe this is one of these mysterious Trojans that basically came much closer to planet Earth and is now captured in the semi-permanent orbit. And so a lot of different investigations tried to uncover its origins. And if this is indeed one of these hidden asteroids from the Lagrange points, this would be a pretty big discovery. And so in the last few years, several teams tried to investigate this asteroid by essentially looking at its emissions and specifically looking at its colors or its reflectance spectra as it's known. And by looking at what sort of frequencies of light it emits, we can then sort of determine where it maybe came from. For example, one of the first discoveries from a few years ago was the discovery that this asteroid seems to be rotating relatively fast compared to some of the other rocks. A single rotation here takes roughly around 28 minutes. And at the same time, it seems to vary in brightness quite a lot, meaning that it seems to be reflective on one side and not so reflective on the other. Or maybe it's just elongated in shape, kind of similar to what you see in this simulation here. But a lot of these earlier studies from 2017 also started to uncover something a little bit unusual about its reflections. 
the light that was coming from the surface of this asteroid was not actually matching any of the other known asteroids. As a matter of fact, it seemed to be very different from anything the scientists have seen so far, and they've seen millions of these rocks already. And this, of course, already suggested that it has a very peculiar origin, most likely not from the asteroid belt. And so now, after years and years of waiting and investigating, the scientists have finally confirmed that it does indeed have an extremely unusual reflectance spectrum, which seems to be very similar to something else we've seen coming from outer space. It seems to resemble the regolith from the moon, specifically the regolith from the Apollo missions. Now, as you can see from this graph, it's not maybe the perfect match just yet, but it seems to be the most likely explanation to what we're observing here. It does seem to be a piece of the moon or is at least made of the same stuff as the moon. And so since it seems to reflect very similar wavelengths of light as the rocks coming from the moon, and also because it seems to be located in a relatively similar orbit to both our planet and the moon, the natural conclusion here is that, well, maybe this is indeed a large chunk of the moon that was most likely ejected during one of the asteroid collisions. And this, of course, answers a lot of questions. For example, my personal question back in the days, especially when I was experimenting with the Universe Sandbox simulation, was in regards to, well, this. Notice how as soon as we collide something with a planet like Mars right here, we're going to have a lot of different rocks going all over the place. All of these fragments right here, they must end up somewhere. They might not end up on Mars necessarily, but they're going to end up in outer space. And naturally, a lot of these Martian rocks will eventually end up on various planets, including planet Earth. As a matter of fact, as of today, we've discovered nearly 300 of these rocks already. But then again, if you look at the surface of the moon, well, it's filled with craters. And so it's sort of natural to assume that some of these leftover rocks are also going to be orbiting around, possibly colliding with planet Earth, but some of them are probably still out there, very close to planet Earth, possibly in the orbit around both objects. And we might have just discovered one of these objects. It might be this right here. Which also means that this is a really exciting opportunity for a potential mission. And, well, there's good news. NASA has already discussed the potential mission to this rock, but it actually might be China that gets here first. They've talked about the mission a few years ago, and they're planning to launch the spacecraft known as Zhenghe to this object in 2025. And because this is going to be a sample return mission, this is going to be super exciting. Because, well, we might be getting a piece of the moon, but a piece of the moon that actually came from a direct collision. Something that a lot of scientists would love to take a look at. But I guess the other natural question is, okay, so what exactly created this rock? We know that it stayed in this orbit for at least 500 years, which means that the collision might have happened approximately 500 years ago. Unless, of course, this rock somehow found its way back to this particular orbit, and the collision itself might have happened a long, long time ago, but that's kind of unlikely. The most likely explanation is that there is probably a crater that's only about 500 years old somewhere on the surface of the moon, and that crater might have created this rock. This crater would also be pretty big because the rock itself is about 40 meters across, and for something like this to escape the moon's surface, would require a pretty powerful collision. So this by itself is already a pretty interesting mystery that needs to be solved and could actually present us with an excellent opportunity to study these collisions by literally analyzing them only a few hundred years after they happened. But at the moment, nobody really knows what exactly created this or where it came from. It's possible that by using some sort of a combination of orbital analysis with a sample analysis, we might work out where exactly it came from by looking at the samples and figuring out the composition of these rocks. But this would require that mission from China and the return of the samples. Until then though, I guess it's just another mystery, but a pretty exciting mystery to solve. So once we learn more or once we actually figure out what exactly this rock is and where it came from, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.
the asteroid known as 469219 Come on, Ulwa.